Hey everyone, Alan Chambers from CSW. I wanted to share some knowledge that I've been working on over the past several years. Uh, the focus has been on fundamentals, or what I call fundamental elements. And uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, basic stand-ups, right? So oftentimes I see uh, kind of uh, different techniques or different methods perpetuated in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and grappling in general. And they don't necessarily hold up under pressure or stress particularly when you're in an MMA context or a self-defense context. Uh, that's always my focus is the combative side of things. So it's really important that people go through these really simple movements that you learn early on, but you do them correctly. And you have to be able to do them correctly uh, throughout your career, whether you're just focused on uh, gi or no gi or whatever the case is. If you have any inkling to potentially uh, use your grappling in the self-defense scenario or you're interested in MMA, there's even high-level guys that still make this mistake. And I'll share that clip as well as part of this. So again, focused on the fundamentals. Everyone, if you've been practicing a, a few months to many years, this is something you've been exposed to and you already know. I'm going to show my way and start to explain it. And then I'll bring in a partner and I'll explain some of the reasons why I do this type of uh, teaching and instruction. This is a tiny sliver of a whole foundational series that I have that will be uh, filmed very soon. And I'll be sharing with all of you, uh, obviously with the whole crew of CSW. Uh, but I want to make sure that everyone starts to really understand where this is going. It's fundamentals, but it's breaking them down in more of a logical sense and being able to test them and experiment with them under pressure. Okay, uh, although BJJ and grappling does have pressure testing for self-defense, quite often people don't test it, right? So you need to be able to test it under different uh, stress levels, under different scenarios, environmental scenarios, not always on the mat, and under different clothing scenarios, right? Uh, darkness, lightness, all those things are really important for you to be able to test whatever you're trying to accomplish. So it really comes down to intent. What are you trying to do? Okay. And again, if this has any connection to MMA or self-defense, you need to be doing this. It's super, super important. And in general, everyone should be doing it because they're just slight modifications on what you already know or may already be teaching. So from here, I want to get to a what I call a rocking base, right? I want to sway and rock to a position into what I call the seated combat base. So I'm going to rock. Notice my bottom leg is down at a 90 degree angle top leg and knee pointed toward the ceiling, okay? My left arm is down. If I were to go to my opposite side, my right, your left, I move to this side and I'm over here, okay? This is what I call seated combat base. And I can use any of my guards, I can go back down, I can come up. But today we're gonna focus on the stand-up portion. So as I'm covered here, I can rock back and forth and that can be a drill in itself. I have a multitude of different uh, drills that I do within this to teach this under different levels of stress and different opponents. So once I establish this, it's understanding how I get up. So typically I teach three ways of standing up. The first way is gonna be forward. The second way is gonna be back. The third way is gonna be a hybrid because the back one is not always uh, accessible by everyone because it does take some degree of strength and some degree of flexibility. Um, don't be, uh, don't be uh, clouded by the idea that jujitsu or grappling does not require strength um, because if it didn't, you'd just be laying there. What I want to start to do is move forward. So I'm going to back up a hair. I want to engage my front foot with the heel and I'm pulling myself like a leg curl, right? Like a hamstring curl. This bottom foot is not limp. I'm still using the side of my foot, whether you have shoes on or not. And both are pulling me forward, okay? I don't want my knees out. I want one knee up, 12 o'clock, one knee out at three or nine. I'm pushing off the rear hand. I'm pulling and pushing forward over this shin. Push and pull. My knees and my body should be at a 90 degree angle, okay? Notice my shin is straight down over my ankle, my foot forward, my other knee and my shin are at a 90, okay? From there, I can start to stand up. So I'll do a different angle. We're here, okay? What I wanna be able to do, engage the foot, engage both feet, push off, stand up and come up. One more time from the rear. I'm here, I rock, I push pull, and I'm here. So you should wind up with that push-pull movement. Super simple, everyone knows it for the most part. So that's my forward stand-up. And what I want to do with that is be able to find this position, this seated position on uh, what I call both butt cheeks to make it really simple. 
I rock to one side and I push pull up to this combat base or what I call kneeling combat base. From here, I can start to posture up, turn and engage my foot. Again, one more time. I'm here, rock, push pull, seated combat base. And I'm, I'm in a position where I can start to take down or stand up or do whatever I need to do from that position. So that's what I call forward. There are opportunities where that exists, whether you're playing guard or butterfly, or you're kicking someone off of you maybe, where you have the opportunity to start to come up or start to wrestle or scramble. So that's why I teach that. It's not always going back. Sometimes it's going forward. So the next thing we're gonna focus in on is being able to move backwards. And this is where I see the largest amount of problems, okay? Especially in self-defense or MMA. Now, in self-defense, anything goes, right? It's a valetudo scenario, anything is possible. So you need to be aware of all those possibilities. So that's why I like teaching and focusing on the combative side, because you can always start to take things away and start to add rules. But if you're confined to those rules and then you take them away, it's very jarring and very disorienting. So I like starting from the combative mindset first, okay? So we're gonna look at the rear standup, right? Or the technical standup as most people know it. So now, when I'm showing this, and I'll show you the way that's typically taught, okay? You engage your right leg, in this case, my right foot, my left hand. I lift my body up, okay? And I'm gonna swing this bottom leg back, okay? And then I can stand up. Now, most people don't see anything wrong with that. I do. Okay? So when I teach this, particularly to beginners or even more advanced people, I really focus in on the position of the head. Now for MMA, if you're familiar with MMA or you're a practitioner, you know that if I have a hand down or a knee down, I'm a grounded opponent. Okay? So that makes a big difference whether or not you can attack someone or not. It also allows you to defend because if I'm in this position here or any semblance of it, I'm a grounded opponent. So I know I can't get hit, but the minute I do this, and start to come up, there's opportunity there, okay? Now, in self-defense, obviously, that's a big issue as well, because depending on the surface, um, weapons involved, multiple people, those are all factors I need to account for, right? And I can't always necessarily wrestle. Uh, submissions are probably a big no-no on the street, at least that's my point of view. But looking at this, we need to better understand how we get up and how to eliminate vulnerabilities in this framework. So again, I'll show you the way that's usually taught. Left foot, right hand. Lift the butt, step back, and I'm in this position and we stand up, okay? So this position, notice where I'm at. My head is down, my back is flat. Here, okay? So here I can't see very well. Even if I put my head all the way up, I cannot see very well, right? And then most people come back down and kind of sit through. What I focus in on is getting to the squat position or a sumo squat. So what does that look like? The sumo squat is gonna be here, okay? To the best of your ability. Proud chest, knees wide, feet wide. I'm sitting straight down, and I should be able to touch my hand on the ground. My head is up, right? Just like I'm doing a deadlift, okay? I wanna make sure my body is looking up and I'm postured. From here, I should be able to move to both sides, forward, backward, left, right, sit out, or do whatever I need to do. So that's gonna be my focus, getting to there. That's not always accessible. And lots of times it's flexibility issues. So it's something you can always work on and progress, but it's super important because if I don't, I expose my head and my body to attacks, particularly to the soccer kick to the head, okay? Again, I always provide examples, whether street examples or MMA, to justify why and how I teach. So what I want to focus on is getting up into that sumo squat. So I get up, what I need to do is use my bottom leg, my right leg in this case, to replace my right butt cheek here, okay? So there are four legs of the table. So I'm gonna lift, step up. Notice where I'm at. Notice my butt down and my head is up. I'm not here, I'm here. It seems like a subtle difference, but it really matters because the minute I do this, I get kicked in the head, okay? Especially in the MMA context. If I'm here, I can guard, I can come back down, I can wrestle or do a multitude of other things. So it's really important you start to get your hips under you and start to understand why that's important. So again, one more time. We're here, rock, lift, come back. Look where I'm at in this deep sumo squat, like I'm shooting in, right? I'm here, I can protect myself, and it's just changing levels. 
to wherever I need to be in, and I can fully stand up should I want to. So next, I'm going to bring in my partner in a second, and we're going to talk about why this is important and show an example of how this works, and then I'll follow it up by that clip. Um, there was actually a clip from the UFC from a few years ago where this exact thing happened, right? High-level martial artist in the UFC gets up poorly because he feels he has space. He's doing it backwards and just gets cracked right in the face, all right? So next, I'm going to bring in uh, one of my training partners, Dan, and he's going to come over here into this space, and we're going to show all three, and there's going to be a focus in on uh, the last one we talked about, okay? And I'll show the hybrid real quick, too. So the first one, I may make room. I may be in here. I may have enough room, and I may want to come up and wrestle. That's kind of your first one with the seated to kneeling combat base, right? Really simple. Again, I'm here. I'm moving around. I'm making room. Maybe there's an attachment, and I can come up, right? Very, very simple. Now, probably not the best route in self-defense, but it is one possibility. Now, the rear one, the second most uh, popular one, is if you can make room or say there was room already, I got knocked down and I want to get up and not go forward, I'm going to do what's typically taught here. As you can see, my head is in perfect range to get cracked in soccer kicks. Okay? Don't want it. Okay? If you look at MMA series like one or the old pride videos, you could still kick a, gr a grounded opponent. Not a good place to be because that doesn't exist in most MMA uh, leagues now. Um, this is not allowed. But the minute I do this, I get kicked in the face because I can't see. I can only see Dan's knees from here. Even with my head straight up, I can only see his knees. Okay? So what I want to do is get my butt under me, my butt down, head up. So if I make room, I'm here. Notice I'm guarding. I have a really tight guard, and I'm coming up to here. Look where I'm at. So if he kicks me, I'm still here. Not the best, but it's better than getting full-on soccer kicked in the face. It also allows me, if he decides to kick, I can always move back, okay, which allows me to move forward. Or I can move in, and if he decides to kick, and I'm in here, and I have my takedowns. So I can go from the back to the forward, all right? So that's why I want to start to avoid having that bad positioning. It seems like a minor nuance, but it makes a huge difference. Thank you, Dan. So one of the next things I want to start to look at is the hybrid. So we did the forward, we did the backward. As you're working on the backward, if it's not currently accessible to you, we're going to do the hybrid, which is no more than just pulling the shin back. So again, forward, backward, hybrid. It's like a quarter of a sit through. So this would be your short sit. I'm just doing that. This is much more accessible for most people and getting up. So if you want to utilize that hybrid, it's on the way, both forward or backward. So it's important you understand that. So you can mix forward, you can mix backward, or you can mix the full back throughout all of these. So drill those, test them out, put yourself under pressure, have people come at you, have people try and take you down, have people try and keep you down. Those are all opportunities that you can do while you're on the mats, as drills, as warm-ups, as part of sparring. It's really, really important, even in MMA context. So whether you're focused on the combatives, the MMA, or just the submission wrestling and, and jiu-jitsu, those are all great chances for you to be able to apply and enter into your daily training. So again, this is one part, a tiny little sliver, of a bigger foundational element series that I have that's focused on tweaking and improving your overall grappling game more with the focus on that self-defense and combatives, but still a very important element of what you can do. Because if you utilize any three of these, it will improve your overall grappling game in addition to making you aware of what to expect under conditions that have striking or even potentially weapons. All right, so thanks again. Alan Chambers from CSW, and I'll talk to you soon. If you like this video, like, share, and subscribe. And hit the little bell for notifications if you like the video, this one, and more like it.